<laughs> Good morning, everybody. We seem to have um, some other activities going on in the church, so we're going to go ahead uh, with our worship service and get started. Uh, silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. I won't sing the whole song for you, but you know it very well. The last two phrases of this well-loved Christmas carol, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. The idea of all children sleeping in heavenly peace is a beautiful thought, but unfortunately not a reality. So much so that a national organization was formed called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. This organization fully believes that a bed is a basic need for the proper physical, emotional, and mental support that a child needs. All children deserve a safe, comfortable place to lay their heads. In Idaho and across the US, too many boys and girls go to sleep without a bed or even a pillow to sleep on. These children end up sleeping on couches, blankets, and even floors. This can affect their happiness and their health. That's where Sleep in Heavenly Peace comes in. There are a group of volunteers dedicated to building, assembling, and delivering top-notch bunk beds to children and families in need. The organization has grown steadily over time, and they are working on opening more chapters in different states to serve more people. We are lucky to have one of those chapters in Alton, Illinois. They serve Bethalto, Brighton, Cottage Hills, Dow, Godfrey, Hartford, Jerseyville, Morrow, Roxana, and Wood River, besides Alton itself. So how does this happen? It starts with businesses or individuals donating building materials and bedding. It continues when volunteers organize a, bid, a build day and come to the chapter's facility to learn and then build wooden monk beds themselves. There is an application process that allows individuals in need for a bed and when those are received and the beds are ready, delivery days are scheduled. You may have seen some of those days that I've posted on our Facebook page. The smiles say it all. This month, we have been collecting bedding for twin size bunk beds. The bins are in the meeting area and will continue to be there through next Sunday. If you're able, please consider purchasing a pillow, comforter, or sheets and deposit them in the bin. If you can't get out to make a purchase, please consider a monetary donation and just put sleep in heavenly peace in the memo line. These donations will go towards the mattresses that are needed to put on the beds on delivery day. Thank you for your consideration. One day, we hope that all communities will be able to say, no kids sleep on the floor in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. I apologize for my tardiness. I, uh, this morning, have a little bit of a migraine, so please bear with me. Uh, I will direct your attention to our various uh, announcements in the window section of our uh, bulletin. This includes uh, what we have our flocking frenzy coming up this summer. Uh, so if you don't want to get your yard flocked, make sure you get your flocking insurance in. Um, and if you want to flock people, uh, contact myself or Aaron Beavers to get that on the schedule. Uh, we also have our Father's Day uh, uh, balloon bouquet that will be uh, coming up here so you can get your orders in for that as well. There are many more, of course, um, that you can look there for. And so the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And I also with you. Let us share this peace with one another.
Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in our call to worship. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with songs of joy. For God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Lift up your hearts. God is ruler over all the earth. The Lord reigns on a holy throne. Lift up your hearts. 
God put this power to work in Christ, raising him from the dead. God has highly exalted him, giving him the name above all names. Lift up your hearts. Let us worship God. Trusting in God's might and mercy, let us join in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and have failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin, that we may be your faithful people, obeying the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, the body. Friends, the God of all grace, who calls us to eternal glory in Jesus Christ, will restore, support, and strengthen us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
please be seated. Join me in our prayer for illumination. God most high, reigning in glory, send down your spirit of wisdom to shine in your heavenly word so that we may worship you with joy, continually blessing your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1. Listen for the word of the Lord. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading comes from 1 Peter. Listen again for the word of the Lord. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will restore support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I mentioned, I stand before you suffering this morning. I woke up with a migraine, and I'm not a normal migraine sufferer, but in the last month my body has decided that I'm not getting enough sleep. Um, and so this is something about having an infant and a toddler and being busy with busy things and never-ending tasks that need completed and on and on and so my body has decided that it wants to respond by making my head hurt through light and sound and so i ask that you bear with me how appropriate though that this morning our scripture talks about suffering and expectations now, first Peter talks of suffering fiery trials because of faith. Now, this is a particular suffering because we may not experience that here in Edwardsville, Illinois, 
because we are among a privileged group of people as Christians in the United States. We are guaranteed freedom of religion within our national documents, but in the time that First Peter is written, they are in the Roman Empire, and in the Roman Empire you can believe what you want to believe, but if you go outside of that and begin doing things that express what it is you believe, uh, and if they go anywhere against anything that the empire is doing to build up the power and authority of the empire, well, you might meet your end in violence on a cross in the name of keeping peace. You see, authority and power belong to Caesar and the Roman Empire, and if you say anything differently or do anything differently to begin making people think that maybe Caesar is not all-knowing and all-powerful and God, that perhaps the Roman Empire is not divinely ordained, then you are an enemy of the state. This is one of the reasons why Jesus is persecuted so easily, perhaps, because he assures people that authority is not in Rome or in Caesar, but in God and God alone. Jesus and the early church weren't persecuted exclusively for believing in Jesus, but rather that they preached, that they shared the good news to those who lack resources, that they preached freedom to people who were in prison, that they promised accessibility to those who have disabilities. The apostles were rejecting conformity with a system in a society where power structures benefit from the oppression of others. They were telling those who were oppressed that they would see a time where they would no longer be oppressed. They were saying that rather than a time when the wealthy continue to get wealthier and the poor continue to get poorer, that Jesus and the disciples were overturning the very, very way that this society was ordered. See, Rome's way of maintaining peace was through this force death and violence. Respect of the empire was on par with being feared, gained by using force to silence those in need rather than to tend to and care for those in need. You can be your own person, but if you step out of line, you're in trouble. You can believe what you want to believe, but if you don't do what I say, you have to do that or you're in trouble and trouble often meant death. So this is the backdrop that we have to the ascension, to our Acts passage here. Jesus has been punished by Rome for giving these promises, among other reasons, these promises of hope, these glimpses of what the kingdom of God might look like. We know that Jesus is not held down, of course, by death, but is resurrected and comes back to life and returns and spends time with the 11 remaining disciples and the others around to tell them how they are to be on earth and the next things to come. In Acts, we have a continuation of the Gospel of Luke. Luke is writing to Theophilus. This is presumably a leader of a, of a church in the region. You see, Luke shares in the first book, the Gospel of Luke, that Jesus, all that Jesus says and does until the ascension. So the second book then is the telling of the Acts of the Apostles. So Luke picked up by telling the ascension a second time. It tells it at the very end of the Gospel of Luke, and now its focus is on the disciples and that what they do. So Jesus and the disciples are together, and he reminds them that John the Baptist baptized with water, but they will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the disciples immediately ask if this is when Jesus is going to restore the kingdom of Israel. The disciples are asking, are you going to fix it all now, Jesus? Well, they're thinking about the concept of a big, strong, powerful Messiah coming in and destroying the powers of Rome so that there might once more be a kingdom of Israel instead of just Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. 
See, there's no Israel because it has been destroyed. But they clearly have not been listening to Jesus throughout his ministry because over and over and over and over and over again, Jesus has told them of methods that do not match those of big, brutal, violent kingdoms of earth that have claimed authority by force. Over and over again, Jesus is talking about loving neighbors and caring for those in need and subverting the idea that power comes through force. So Jesus reminds them that it is not for the disciples to know when God will do what God is going to do, that God has the authority and will do what is necessary when it is necessary. Instead, Jesus directs their attention to the Holy Spirit and assures them that they will be witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then Christ descends into the clouds. Rightfully so, the disciples and us, the readers, uh, are attuned then and directed toward the heavens, toward God, toward what God can do and what God will do. But it's right then that these two men in white keep us from getting lost in the clouds. They ask, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward the heavens? These messengers bring the disciples back down to earth from the clouds. They remind the disciples and us, the readers, that we don't yet get to go up into the clouds and wait, but that we are about doing the work too. They ground the disciples, if you will. What about now? What do we do now? And Jesus has told them that they will be witnesses. The Holy Spirit will come and baptize them and they will be witnesses. And so now the disciples are to move forward with what they have seen. So the disciples do what they do best. They gather together in a room. They gathered together in the room after Jesus' death. And we see them gathered now as they stay together and they wait. They support one another and they pray because Jesus has said that the Holy Spirit is coming. They are waiting and they are anticipating. But as we know, the book is called the Acts of the Disciples. Uh, acts of the apostles they are not still once the holy spirit hits them at pentecost the disciples those certain women that are in the room with them praying they are all on the move jesus has given them instruction jesus has said that they are to be witnesses this is that they are to speak the truth in power the holy spirit will give them not authority for authority is god's but power to be found in telling the truth about who Jesus is, who God is, and what the disciples have seen, not just the disciples, but also the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and other certain women as well. Of course, we're not given their names, but perhaps Mary Magdalene, perhaps Martha and Mary, and so many others. Jesus tells the disciples to do what they can to, do, to control the things that they can control. They cannot control Rome, but they can control how they respond to the people that are being harmed by what Rome and society has determined to be the order of society. So they are to love God and to love their neighbors. And we know from the Gospels how Jesus instructed them to do this. Matthew 25 is a great spot to look if you need a short reminder to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, provide beds for those who need beds, perhaps. From the rest of the book of Acts and from the many letters that we read in the New Testament, this is what we see them doing. They meet together, they travel together, they work together, they seek to witness to God's glory in the world. And so, too, we hope for the goodness of God for each and every individual that we meet. We hope for a time where there will not be suffering, no migraines, 
For now, while there is suffering, we remain firm in the faith because we know that we are not alone in our journey as followers of Christ. We work together because of the Holy Spirit. We have our witness, our life experiences, our testimony, our voices, our time, our talents, and our funds that we can and will use to bring light to the glory of God, to point others toward the clouds and then back to the work here on earth. Remembering that the spirit moves among us here. It is in this time and place that we work to bring relief and joy for the glory of God to those who are suffering and to love God and love our neighbors. Each week, we say the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, we know that this world is not what it could be. And so we, along with the cloud of witnesses that have come before us, work for hope and peace and live in to the promise that God has the authority to make it so. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning as we turn to God in prayer, we remember Betty Willard, Pat Coffey, Liz Cochran's son Ian, and Bridget Mosley. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks that in every age you have confirmed in the saints the glorious promise of our inheritance in Christ and the immeasurable greatness of your just and gracious power. It's because we remember the life and work of Christ, his ministry among the poor and forsaken, his death upon the cross of human shame, the victory of the empty tomb and his ascension to glory, that we come before you in prayer for those in need. We pray for those who are weary from illness, grief, injustice, violence, natural disasters, and the many other things that leave our needs unmet. Because we remember the joy with which the disciples receive the risen Christ, and that the Holy Spirit comes to accompany us and guide us, we too celebrate with those who rejoice for new jobs, for new beginnings, for good health, for the end of the school year and the joy that comes with anticipating summer trips and plans. Enable us, O oh God, by the power of your spirit to live our lives 
in a way that is worthy of the gospel, to the glory of the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, join me in our call to offering. The Apostle Peter writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Grateful for God's gift of new life, we offer our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we commit our tithes and offerings, signs that our lives are committed to your purposes. Continue your work in us that we may bear good fruit, not neglecting the season of opportunity you place before us. When the time is ripe, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples when praying to say, Our Father, who art in kingdom, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the power of his resurrection. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord be kind and gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Amen.